what would you do if your family holiday was being derailed by a pregnant guest's demands? Would you bend the rules or stand your ground? Am I the wrong one for not inviting my pregnant sister-in-law to Thanksgiving? I hosted Thanksgiving this year. Every year, it rotates between me, my sister, and my brother's homes. It's a pretty big gathering that normally involves my siblings, their partners, my sister's kids, and our parents. This year, my brother James and his wife Becky are having their first child. The baby is due in spring. We have a traditional Thanksgiving meal, watch the parade, play games as a family, couple drinks together in the evening, the usual stuff. Same kind of thing every year. This year, a couple weeks back, I get what is basically a list of demands from Becky in our family group chat. She wants to come, but her pregnancy means some things need to be adjusted. Her rules were no poultry as the smell makes her sick, no alcohol as the smell makes her sick and she can't join in. The food needs to be served early as she needs to nap during the time it's normally served, and she doesn't want to play the games as she tires easily. So can we just listen to music toss talk in the evening instead? I was really upset by this. Firstly, none of us are vegetarian, and so I don't really know how to prepare a turkey alternative. But secondly, I'd already ordered the turkey, and it seems like a waste. And to not be able to drink, eat when we want to, or even play our games in the evening just feels so unreasonable when nine of us won't get to celebrate in the way we'd like to. In the family chat, I replied and said while I would make her a non-poultry meal and would make sure people don't drink at the table, I wouldn't ban poultry or alcohol from the house and I certainly wouldn't be not playing our games, particularly as my niece and nephew are now old enough to join in and really loved it last year. Both James and Becky said I was being unreasonable and that she's pregnant so I need to be more understanding. My mom joined in and said it's not hard to accommodate, but I was really annoyed by this point. I told Becky she was uninvited if she can't accept any compromise whatsoever. James called me separately to say I'm excluding her and ruining their Thanksgiving and she can't help how she feels during pregnancy. I said I wasn't excluding her and she's welcome if she can accept that Thanksgiving has to work for everyone else too. In the end, neither Becky or James came over. It was a weird day without them and I'm sad they weren't there, but I feel like I wasn't unreasonable. I do want to make amends, but am I the wrong one? So... What do you think? Was the host being too rigid, or was Becky asking for too much? Let me know in the comments below. Am I the wrong one for not doing anything about my daughter's crush on her uncle? I'm a single mom to a seven-year-old girl, Olivia. My best friend Jenna and her husband, Mateo, babysit Olivia three to five days or nights a week. I'm a night shift nurse. Mateo is a very attractive firefighter that rides a motorcycle and doesn't mind getting his nails painted. He got Olivia an electric scooter so they can ride their motorcycles together. It goes a max of 10 miles per hour. His coworker has a kid a little older than Olivia, so he constantly brings home pretty clothes and toys and princess dresses that she grew out of. Olivia is in love with her Uncle Mateo and is convinced that when she's a grown-up, she's going to marry Uncle Mateo. Jenna and Mateo know about Olivia's crush. She tells Mateo that she's going to marry him every time she paints his nails. She runs past Jenna to hug Mateo every time I drop her off. Jenna had an event last weekend, so Olivia had a few hours alone with Mateo. He decided to take her on a little date. So she put on a pretty dress. He wore a nice shirt and tie. He bought her flowers and a balloon, and they got pizza and ice cream. Olivia has been talking about this date nonstop since then. Another one of my friends was over, and Olivia wanted to tell her about her date with Uncle Mateo, and be got her flowers and a heart balloon and ice cream, and that she's going to marry him when she's a grown-up. I sent Olivia to go get her new Moana dress to show her auntie, and while she was gone, my friend told me that it was extremely inappropriate to let Olivia have a crush on a grown man and to let him take her on a date when he knows she has a crush on him. I told her it's a harmless crush. She'll understand that she can't marry him in a few years, and he's the only man in her life, so it's just like a daddy-daughter date. He fills in for every other daddy-daughter event for her anyways. She contacted Jenna to ask if she knows that Olivia wants to marry Mateo, and if she's comfortable with him taking her on a date. Jenna told her to fuck off, but my friend is still convinced that I'm wrong, and this is putting Olivia in a vulnerable position. Am I the wrong one for not doing anything about her crush on her uncle? Am I the wrong one for not telling my ex-wife that we lived in a rental apartment? Hi. Back in 2008 when I started university, 
I rented a two-bedroom apartment with my girlfriend at the time and my friend and his girlfriend. We got a great deal for it as the owner of the place lost his job because of everything that happened back then and decided to try her luck abroad where she still lives. Years went by and after university, my friend and his girlfriend decided to find a place of their own. As we had full-time jobs, renting this apartment together did not seem expensive anymore and also did not seem expensive to rent alone after we broke up some time later. So there I was, alone in a two-bedroom apartment in the central part of the city. The owner decided that she was too lazy to mess with bills and stuff every month and made arrangements for me to pay everything directly. As I earned her trust, I still pay her monthly rent, which is very cheap for today, and deal with everything else, having her authorization. Because of the perfect location, my second bedroom was basically free bed and breakfast for my friends who did not live in the city, and I did not mind. It is good to have comfort company if you live alone. In 2020, I met a girl who was in a rush to get married, and as I was madly in love, we did in 2021. For some reason, I never told her the story of how I rented the place or that it was a rental at all. It just never came up. I have been so used to the fact that I am an authorized representative with building cooperative things, etc., that I refer to it as my place. Our relationship started to cool down, and we found out that we were not perfect for each other after all so divorce it is. So, we did the paperwork for divorce, and she is moving out. A few days ago, I received an email from her with a real estate valuation document as an attachment. While I was not at home, she wasted 500 euros for someone to evaluate an apartment that does not belong to us, and wrote that I probably have to take a loan to pay her the 50% of that. I replied to her, didn't I ever tell her that this place is a rental? Why does she even assume that I can afford a two-bedroom apartment in the city center? She knows where I work and how much I earn. She called and screamed at me that I had lied to her for years and hid the fact that the apartment was rental. Then she tells me that, well, she will take the car as we got that together. And I was quiet for a moment and then told her, you do know that is a lease, right? The owner of the car is the bank. Then she demanded that I pay for the valuation, and I replied, I did not ask you to do it. She called me an a-hole and ended the call. Of course, she told our whole friends group how I lied to her during the whole marriage, and there was a discussion in a messenger group with friends that, if is it a lie or not, whether was it an a-hole thing to do, some agree with me and some with her. Am I the wrong one? Am I the wrong one for kicking my sister and her boyfriend out? My sister and her boyfriend moved in with me at the end of August after he was laid off from work. She doesn't make enough to pay rent on her own. The agreement was for them to stay at my apartment through the holidays so they could save up money and he could find a new job. All they'd have to contribute is $500 for rent and food. He has done his part and found a new job, and they have been saving money for their move, which is part of the reason why I feel like I might be the wrong one here. I work graveyard in a small group home for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. I cannot sleep at work because I'm the only one there and I have to be awake in case one of our residents needs me or there's an emergency. I spend my time at work cleaning, doing documentation, changing people's depends, making their meals for the next day, and giving a few of them their showers in the morning. Needless to say, I have to stay awake and alert the entire time I'm there. My sister has a difficult time understanding that I need my place to be reasonably quiet during the day so I can get my sleep. I could understand some normal amount of noise, but she took it over the top, laughing obnoxiously loud, blasting her music or TV in the living room, right next to my bedroom, having loud guests over, being very loud in the bathroom and kitchen, etc. I asked very nicely many times to please keep it down, and she always apologized and said okay, but then she started to make it my problem and said I should buy noise-canceling headphones or sleep at my boyfriend's place instead. I finally got upset and told her they're being allowed to stay with me as guests, and if she can't act as such, then they need to find somewhere else to stay. She spent the rest of the day calling all her friends and everyone in our family telling them how horrible I am for threatening to kick them out. Our parents reached out to me and asked if that was true. I told them the situation and they're on my side but said I should give them the month to figure things out. I called and spoke with her boyfriend and he felt genuinely bad about the situation and had no idea this was an issue. I try not to bring him into things, but figured since this would affect him, it was only right. Now she's even more furious with me because I went behind her back and called him and manipulated him into being on my side. I told her, look, I will give them until November 1st to figure something out. And he even said it probably wouldn't even be that long as they could go stay with his parents. But my sister is choosing to die on this hill, 
and make me out to be the villain when all I wanted was some quiet so I could function at work. Am I the wrong one for kicking them out? I do feel bad because her boyfriend is doing what he can and is being reasonable. I just don't understand why my sister can't comprehend that I can't sacrifice my sleep and put my livelihood at risk. Thoughts? Am I the wrong one for making my mom's life difficult by making her fight for custody? My dad died in June. I am 16. He had custody of me. My mom lives in another state. She moved when I was seven because her husband got a new job and wanted a better life for his kids. Mom wanted to take me. She and dad battled it out in court. I was asked what I wanted by a judge. It was a really bad time for me. I told the judge I wanted my mom but didn't want to leave my dad, my friends, or my family. I told him I really didn't want to go. She was really kind to me. I don't remember everything she said, but I do remember her apologizing for me being in that position. She decided to give dad custody of me and gave mom summer parenting time and weekly calls to me. I begged mom not to leave. She told me she had to, but wanted me to come with them. I told her I didn't want to leave dad behind, but I didn't want to be left behind. She left and told me nothing much would change. For a while, the calls were great and all, but then she started putting her stepkids, who were under five when mom and her husband moved, on the phone after two minutes of us talking. The calls were meant to be for her and me, but she wanted me to keep the bond with her stepkids. I never had a bond with them, so the calls sucked, and I started ending the calls when she would pass the phone to everyone else. Mom never came back on the phone, so I didn't need to stay on the phone. She'd correct me for it, and I'd tell her I wanted to talk to her and not them. The calls stayed on the court order, but they were at most five minutes instead of 20 minutes. Summers. I spent five to seven weeks with Mom. She'd act so excited to see me, but we never really got time for just us. Her stepkids were always added on because her husband would be at work, and when he'd get home, he'd join us. I asked for time with just my mom, and she'd ignore me. I grew more resentful of it all. My dad died right before I was due to fly out to mom's. I don't want to live with her, so I asked my grandparents if they could file for custody quickly. There was an emergency hearing because of the situation, and mom had to fly out for it. She wanted custody, she told the judge. But the judge said I could temporarily stay with my grandparents until a formal court date. Court is a little over a week away. My mom has tried to convince me to move in with her. She told me I should be with my family and my parents. I told her she's my only parent left, but she chose her husband and his kids over me before. So why should I choose her now? She told me I should understand that she didn't want to end her marriage over a good opportunity and how I could have gone with them. She told me she couldn't let his kids down after she became mom to them. I told her she could separate me from one of my parents. Then I pointed out she prioritized them over me. She told me it's not a reason to make her life harder by having to fight for custody of her son, who already lost his other parent. She told me to be fair about this. Am I the wrong one? I told my mother-in-law that's all on her. Am I the wrong one? My five-year-old son's birthday is coming up and he wants a chocolate cake with chocolate icing. It's his birthday, so I said yes. My mother-in-law can be a selfish cow sometimes, and my son was telling her how's he getting chocolate cake and chocolate ice cream. My mother-in-law said she didn't like that, and my so. Should get something we all like. My son said, it's not your birthday, so you don't get a say. This would be normally disrespectful, but recently said this to my son when went to his friend's party. When my son didn't like the cake flavor and we had the discussion about how the birthday person gets to choose their cake flavor because it's their special day. My mother-in-law was shocked and I told her the same thing I told my son. When it's your birthday, you can get whatever flavor of cake you want. My mother-in-law called me a beach and my son a spoiled brat. So I told her, with that attitude, you won't be coming to the party. My husband was WTF and tried to talk me into ordering his mom a cake she would enjoy after our son and I was rude to her. I said, no, it isn't her day. And that just teaches our son to act entitled at other people's parties if we don't stick to the rules and etiquette that we explain to him and it will just make him confused, entitled, and spoiled. My husband saw the truth in that because our son was excited about his birthday cake for his birthday, and now understands that not everything is about him. Other people get to enjoy their special event how they want to. In return, my son gets to enjoy his special event, and occasions how he wants to. My mother-in-law doesn't seem to get that, and wants my son to write her a sorry note, and what he did wrong. My husband and I don't feel like my son did anything wrong by repeating what his parents told him.
My mother-in-law said she's not coming to the birthday party or getting him a gift without the apology note. I told my mother-in-law that's all on her. Am I the wrong one? Am I the wrong one for telling my mom's family I don't owe her because she had gender disappointment? My mom never wanted a boy. She wanted girls. Apparently, her dream was four daughters. But she had me first. I have seen photos and videos of the day I was born. She cried hysterically when they told her I was a boy. Then she refused to hold me. After we were cleaned up, she cried about not using the name she had chosen and said she didn't know how to move on from it. All this was caught on camera. Eventually, my paternal grandma took me, and she was the person to hold me in photos and videos taken during the rest of our hospital stay. My paternal grandma was my sole parent figure for the first eight years of my life. Now I am 16. She took care of me, and I spent so much time at her house. Sometimes I was there for weeks. Then, she had a brain bleed and died. So I was left with a mom who wanted girls and not a boy, and a dad who wanted to be a provider and nothing more. My mom had my sister Lily two years after me. So mom got her girl, and Lily got all her attention, while I got grandma until I was eight and then nobody. My mom and Lily are super close, and mom adores Lily. Lily got the bigger bedroom, she gets the gifts, she gets all her favorite snacks, she gets to do all the extracurricular activities she could ever want, and her birthdays are huge parties with huge gifts. Christmas, she gets at minimum 25 gifts from mom alone. Mom typically gets me one. Never anything I'd like or want, but, you know, thought that counts. Which is zero. My mom's family don't act too interested in making up for my lack of parental love. And in the last couple of years, mom and I have argued more, and I give her a hard time. Dad's never around to give him one. But mom, if she wants to ignore me, then she can hear how shitty it is. And if she wants to treat my sister like a perfect angel, then she can hear about it. Mom has mentioned how I ruined her dream of four daughters. We were at mom's parents' house Friday, and mom gushed about Lily doing good on a project. And the scooter, she got Lily to help her get around easier. She got Lily a custom helmet and a personalized lock for her scooter. She couldn't stop talking about it, and I told her she really does love to shower her favorite in gifts and praise. My mom's family told me I should take it easier on her and said I should understand we had some little troubles because of mom's gender disappointment. I told them I don't owe her shit because she had gender disappointment and that I didn't ask to be born to a mom who only wanted daughters. They told me I lacked adult understanding and compassion. Am I the wrong one?